We're rocking at Gulf Stream Park West, the Fall Turf Festival. Ron Nicoletti along with Katie Stazak, and uh, we have a fast main track, firm turf course. Katie, the big news today, a $150,000 jackpot guarantee in the Rainbow Six, which starts in race number five. They almost nailed it again yesterday, had over 100000 in it, so $150,000 in the Rainbow Six there. You see it up there, $150,000 guaranteed. You excited? I'm very excited, especially since the amount of money that's been bet into this pool already, I could see it exceeding that $150,000. Yeah. So a lot of money on the line. Always a great bet. Hasn't been hit in over a month now. So uh, we'll see how high we can get that to go. Yeah, and you know, we had a, a nice carryover in the pick five yesterday. And when we have carryovers here, people bet a lot. That uh, pick five yesterday paid over $37,000. We had $100,000 bet into it. So uh, I'm sure that the Rainbow Six will see similar action today. As we mentioned uh, at the top of the show, we got a fair, or if we did not mention, I don't know, fast main track, firm tariff course, beautiful day in South Florida. I'm going to say it's a low 80 right now, maybe 70s, 80s, but it's going to be a beautiful day here. And we have our first race is a five and a half furlong sprint. These are claimers. They're fillies and mares. They're three-year-olds and up. They're non-winners of two races in life. $6,250. One jockey change on number two, Miguel Vasquez, will now be the rider. And that's a video we want to show you from back on October 29th of KB by O Rhythms. And you take it away. This is your video. Yeah, we've got a ways to go before this first race, but this filly has taken all the money early, and this is why. In our last start, you're going to watch her Four wide here coming out of the gate and running into the back stretch. And you know what? She's going to stay that way for the majority of this race. Runs wide all the way. Then she's going to make a three wide move coming into the stretch. It's going to drift out slightly. Angles back in a little bit and runs on to be second. She was beaten just two and a half lengths, but I thought that was a really nice effort considering how wide she was pretty much the entire way around. She's dropping in class. This race was at the 12-5 level, and I think she just outclasses the others on paper here. But the continuing class drops that you see in her past performances and a slow pre-race work concern me just a little bit. Yeah, turning back to five and a half of furlongs today from that race at three quarters of a mile. A little bit of a concern for me, too, but a logical choice in there. And if you walk, look at the board right now, three to five, but very early in the wagering. The uh, second horse I used was the seven, and that's uh, Mimi Peo Pontius, and this is a one-run type who should be along to grab a share. I just think if things get dicey on the front end, this is the type of horse that just comes along and can pick up the pieces and get the job done, and you're certainly going to get a better price on the seven horse than you are on the number two. So if you got those concerns like we do with the two, you go with the number seven, Mimi Peo Pontius. Absolutely. I think trainer Antonio Sano has his bases pretty much covered with these two fillies <laughs> in this race. The other one I threw in was Miss Valentina. Close to be third last time out. I thought that was a pretty nice effort considering the jockey lost the whip at the 16th pole and she seems to run her best here a win a second and three thirds in 10 starts hopefully she'll have a little bit better racing luck tonight well the number six rocky rocky t who i put on my ticket has that great equalizer and it's called speed so if this horse should get out there and play uh, on or near the lead and get loose, uh, could be a whole different story. But the logical two in there are the two and the number seven. Our second race of the afternoon is our first turf event, and it's a five furlong maiden event. Phillies two-year-olds. We have a jockey change in the scratch. The jockey change comes on the four. Make the ride of Josie Gomez, the main track only participant, number 11. Little Miss Julia has been declared out of the race, and we want to go back and show you a race from October 18th and it's of the five horse, well, the five horse that day, eight horse today, Lady Shipman. Yeah, we're going to show you this maiden special week from October 18th, and you're going to be watching Lady Shipman. She is hustled out of the gate immediately, and this is her first start. She's going to get the lead from the get-go, and she is going to be pressured the entire way around. She does not get a breather in this race, and then she really continues to run on. She takes the lead at the top of the stretch and starts to separate herself from the pack, but she's going to get caught late. She tired. She really did not get a chance to let up this entire race. I really thought that was an admirable effort for her first start. And uh, she's going to try the turf for the first time today. And I really don't think that's going to be an issue at all. Her damn something to talk about gives us something to talk about because she, <laughs> too, tried the grass in her second career start. And she broke her maiden by five lengths, went on to earn more than $170,000. Uh, Lady Shipman is her first full to race. So we'll see if there's a little bit of deja vu between mother and daughter. Yeah, we'll see that. That's always good to see that uh, the progeny uh, will uh, carry on with the uh, sorry or damn did and run on the turf. 
turf. I like the seven competitive player, and I'll tell you why. That horse, you just saw the video, got caught late. His competitive player turned back to five and a half, for a five furlong, excuse me, after showing a positive late run to get beat only two and a half lengths. That was against $50,000 maidens going seven and a half furlongs. I'm not seeing a great big jump up and, uh, you know, class here for this horse. I like the fact that this horse is going to sit behind the speed again, and uh, for Edgar Prado, his running style perfectly. He's going to sit. He's going to let everybody wing ding it on the front end and come closing. So number seven, competitive player on top of my ticket. The number eight, Lady Shipman, for all the reasons you mentioned in there. And I use the six, uh, Jade Marie, and you all use the number one. Yeah, I also have Jade Marie, though, on my ticket, and I'd like to mention her. Daughter of Malibu Moon, ready to make her debut for the Eddie Pleasa Barn. Pleasa is winning at a 22% clip with his debut runners. And really, this filly is just loaded with top connections. Her sire, Malibu Moon, equally impressive, 14% with his debuting progeny. Paco Lopez in the irons, 32% at this race meet. And Jane Marie's dam, she didn't try turf, but quality-wise was a grade two stakes winner. And she's produced four winners, including one who was able to win on the turf. Don't like Malibu Moon's on the grass, sorry. I put it in third for all the reasons you mentioned, but I'm not a big fan of Malibu Moods on the grid. Doesn't mean she can't win, but I'm not a big fan of that. And you also used the number one in here. Hearsay Social. Uh, classic Harmony, actually, is oh, the I'm one. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's another oh, one. I'm looking, that at just... the long, I'm looking at the first race. I forgot to turn the page. Number that's one. That's okay. This one has improved with every start. Coming in off a three-month freshening. Last seen running third off of Gulfstream's main track in August. Jose Pynchon is another one who does very well with both his first-time turfers and also with horses coming off a layoff of that length. Young Sire, Majestic Perfection, 25% so far with his first-time turfers. The dam also won a stakes on grass overseas in Europe and produced a grade three stakes winner on grass as well as grade two Illinois Derby winner distilled. Okay, so you have that one on the ticket too. And now let's turn the page for sure and go to the third. Six furlongs, claim is three and up. $6,250, scratch the two Leavenworth, also scratch number three. Rage boy, yeah, man, scratch that number three. We had another video we want to show you. We got lots of videos to show you today. And this comes uh, race 10 on uh, November 1st, and it's a $6,250 claimer. And it's the 10 Aries Pride that day. Yeah, this is Aries Pride, who I really think fits with this race, as you've talked about before in the earlier race, pace wise. Nice. He's going to close from the three path in the stretch. He's going to alter course a little bit. The jockey's trying to hit him left handed. He's not really going, so he's going to end up cutting and inside, having to alter course and then he continues to close ground to the wire he's beaten just a length and a half but he, he really is closing ground there at the end and I really like this horse when Reggae Boy was in this race because I think this race was loaded with speed. Still a good bit of speed left with Karate Jack and Con Trip in here. And I think this horse is just going to stalk from off the pace and be able to capitalize on what happens early. Yeah, you lost Reggae Boy in there. Number one Karate Jack, uh, drop it to this level where he reeled off three straight wins. He stalked the pace last time out. He faded, but that was against $10,000 optional claimers going seven furlongs. Marcus Vitale, Orlando Boca Chica. This is the speed of the speed in the race. Karate Jack, all the reasons I have the number 10 on it, thought it was going to sit a real nice trip, but you had to get Raggae Boy out of there, otherwise it was going to be a really hot pace, but still, like you mentioned, going to be horses on the lead. The one Karate Jack, in my estimation, is speed of the speed. I also use the eight horse in there. Classic surgeon, I'll tell you why. This is a late striding type who should sit the trip behind that speed we were just talking about. He was second to Karate Jack, so if you like Karate Jack, he was second to him on September 27th, and he was 55 to 1. So maybe we get a little bit of a price to throw him in as a little bit of a, you know, a, a long shot in there to be on the exacto trifecta ticket. You do have the one Karate Jack and also number seven in here, Contrip, the other speed. Yeah, he's coming in a pretty game neck victory last time out. He's going to be on the lead also, but I think without Reggae Boy in here, maybe he can hold on a little bit. I think that's going to help him for sure. Let's go to the fourth race and back to the turf course today. One mile and one sixteenth. These are claim is three year olds and up twelve thousand five hundred dollars. One scratch of number eleven, Philim Tropo. And we both have the number nine on here, favorite catch. You can start. 
Yeah, favorite catch dropped down to this 12-5 level last time, and it really agreed with him. He had the lead pretty much until the bitter end, was beaten just a half length by a horse named Saturdays for Fun, who's posted four wins this year. Very consistent horse at this level. And this horse is pretty versatile. He can stalk or win from the lead. Also, Jane Sabelli having a very nice meet. Eight wins from just 27 starters. I think a horse I'm going to try and wake up in here is number eight concert stage. A favorite in four consecutive turf races against Simler, trying to repair that uh, chalk burning a reputation after weakening late to finish fifth last time out. I think this third start off the layoff is going to be key for this horse. And concert stage going to give it one more time. Maybe not to win because I like the number nine for all the reasons you mentioned. But I'm going to put the number eight concert stage on my ticket. I really did like concert stage, but I, his form as of late <laughs> just really I, I couldn't go with him, but he has shown enough in the past to be war warrant a consideration in here. I threw in the three, Arian Silver, who I think should appreciate a class drop in here. He was very well beaten last time out when he ran at the Meadowlands, but I'm going to just chalk it up to surface because it's really that effort was an outlier compared with his four previous efforts coming into that race. Two wins in two seconds in four starts that came in an allowance. Two $16,000 claimers, so higher tags than today, and a $7,500 claimer that he won off a year-long layoff. So I think that was just uncharacteristic. Well, how about the number four, Lonesome Street, dropping to this $12,500 level, stretching out today to a mile and a 16th. First start in about, oh, 10 months, but it's Mike Maker. He's 19% with the longer than 180-day layoff. Edgar Prado in the saddle, and every time I... Kick pick these guys, they run okay. When I don't pick them, they absolutely win. So I got this one in third, so I'm expecting the four Lonesome Street to win today. So you can bet they're watching the show right now, and they're not going to run because they've noticed that, that you picked them today. No, I picked them third. I gave him a chance. Okay. I know he's going to win today. Anything else in this race before we flip the page? I just threw in Roamed Burned, who I really think is the best horse on paper, really. <laughs> he's coming off a very nice win, but he hasn't won on grass since breaking his maiden in June. Both of his wins have come on an off-track. But I really think class-wise and performance-wise, especially his, his last race, a nice win at the $16,000 level, you can't count out Vitaly and Boca Chica. Well, the fifth race today, as we mentioned, starts the Rainbow Six with that $150,000 jackpot guarantee. So uh, certain races here, you're going to have to take a stand, maybe make a single and, you know, go deeper in other races. And this is the one where I think you might want to go a little deep in it. First, uh, we got a jockey change in a one, make the ride of David Barocco. Also scratched the number four, Forest Friends. And I went with the number three, Colonel John. And I'll tell you why. This one proved he could win at this level when he defeated 6,200. 250 uh, three lifetime claimers that was back on September 28th. Now he drops again after failing to get involved, but that was against $16,000 three lifetime uh, foes going a mile. It was a rained out uh, race. It was originally scheduled with the turf, moved to a sloppy main track. I like horses that have proven they could win at a level. And you know, for whatever reason, they skipped the condition. He won. He's coming back. He's already uh, beaten three lifetime. Why not do it again? You mentioned, though, that that win came on a race that came off the turf and the right. sloppy going. And this horse has only won on off going, and that concerns me. I can't trust him at 3-1, to one, but <laughs> I did throw him in on the ticket. I went with the 7, dreaming of Andy A. He has yet to finish out of the money since dropping down to this level four starts back. And it could be the track, too. He's never finished off the board here at Gulfstream Park West either. And I thought he ran really well last time out. He was basically in a four-horse duel from the quarter pole on. He and the winner that day were the only ones that could go on with it after setting a quick pace. And Dreaming of Andy A was a well-beaten second. But an effort similar to that, coupled with hopefully an inside trip today, could have him on the winning end. Well, number two, our rat, if you liked his performance just six days ago, you got a chance to bet him again today. He's reeling back fast. It was very impressive. Impressive uh, performance just six a uh, couple of days ago. About back, Luca Panici in the saddle again. So uh, short turnaround. We'll see how the run. The barn does that a lot. The percentage is not that great, but certainly the horse figures against this level of competition. We'll go to our sixth race. This is the race that kicks off the pick five. It's one mile on the turf. These are maiden special weight state bred two-year-olds. And we have a video we want to show you back from uh, this horse's start. Two starts back, and it's on August 30th. And it is a quick, bit quick. Yeah, a bit quick. I thought this was a really nice effort from him. Two starts back. He's going to duel throughout the stretch with a horse named Touchdown Kitten, who came back to ran third in a stake race. 
And a bit quick, loses the lead to touchdown Kitten, but actually comes back and regains the lead. I thought this was a great effort. He's going to lose it again, just missed by a neck in this race. But I thought that was so gutsy of him to come back like that. And obviously, touchdown Kitten is a nice colt. I think he's going to be much, much better second start off the layoff. Last time out, he did not run well, but he had two months off after that race that we just showed you. Mike Maker and Edgar Prado, we've mentioned them. They're winning at a 55% clip together at this racetrack. Maker's also 26%, like you mentioned, horses making their second start off a layoff of 45 to 180 days. Yeah, that uh, uh, jo trainer jock combo has been on fire, as you mentioned. We had it at 50 this morning, but they won a race yesterday, so we, we pumped it up to 55%. Number 10, Overseer is wearing blinkers today after getting a little lost early in its last race, then rallying to finish third in front of a, a bit quick last time out. Stretch out is a good thing for this horse, I believe. It's the a team of trainer Bill White, Edgar Zayas in the saddle overseer. Finished in front of that horse last time out. You're expecting a bit quick to run better today, but uh, overseer is somebody you got to have on your ticket, especially if you're betting uh, in, in the Rainbow Six or starting your pick five ticket here. Absolutely. Completely agree. I also want to mention the five, Prince Vincenzo. He's making his second start and first turf start for trainer Kathleen O'Connell, one of two from O'Connell in here. His dam was a stakes winner on dirt, but he's a half to a horse named What a Party, who was stakes placed on the Gulfstream Park lawn in April and has earned more than $120,000. And this is what's most intriguing to me. This colt turned in a bullet in his last breeze. That's really uncharacteristic of O'Connell horses. She tends to not typically value how fast they go in the morning, more so how they come out of it and how they look to her. So that really says something to me about this horse's ability and how he's coming into this race. Well, we also, I also used, excuse me, the, the first time starter in here, and that's the, uh, number 11, Fatidi, Fastidia's son. This is a son of Thunder Gulch, debuting for a trainer, Carlo Vaccaresa. Paco Lopez in the saddle, and I just think you watch the toad accent on his horse. If it's hot and heavy, I think you got to use this ticket in your Rainbow Six and your pick five, whatever you're betting here, because good combination. They got a scent from out there, and that's Paco's game, sending uh, in this race. So we'll see what happens. He gets over, he gets a nice trip, but we're guessing it's a son of Thunder Gulch, who I do like on the turf, but first time starter uh, from the post 11, a lot to do. Seventh race this afternoon is a six furlong maiden event. These are claim as Phillies two year olds, $12,500. Scratch the eight, Sunshine Heat. Scratch the number 12, Easy Lovin'. And scratch number 13, Tora Katoro. And I went with the number one horse in here, Zamorana. But you uh, started with the number five, and that is Milcita, I think it's pronounced? Melitza. Melitza. <laughs> This is another sign that we're getting closer and closer to the big winner meet. This is Bill Mott's first South Florida starter of this season. This starter of Yes, It's True in the Unbridled Song Mare Mind Eraser has yet to hit the board, but this is a tremendous class drop for this filly. She's run exclusively at Belmont and Saratoga and against much tougher. Her last effort was her worst, but it was on grass. She returns to the main track today in a much softer spot. We'll also get Lasix first time today. I went with the number one Zamorano, and I'll tell you, goes from Post 12 to the rail after setting a pressured pace and weakening to finish fourth. That was against $16,000 types going seven furlongs. Uh, drop to the $12,500 level. Turn back to six furlongs I think is going to be key for this horse's success. On the inside there, and I'm just going with a speed play in there. I mean, the five horse, the big drop. Red flag is flying. I don't know what to expect. Uh, Bill Mott uh, definitely putting the four sale side up on the number five horse here. And that's not to say it can't win. We both used the number seven street princess. Yeah, this one's taking a class drop as well, though not nearly as great as that of Melitza. She comes in off a fourth place effort at the $25,000 level, but she got caught five wide in that race. Also got caught five wide in the start prior, where she was third, beaten just a length. If she can save some ground today, combined with the class drop, she can find the winner's circle. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a tough race. Uh, one of them where you got to go deep. I was going with that inside speed play. But if the five won by 25 lengths, I would not be shocked whatsoever. So let's go to our eighth race this afternoon. We're back on the turf course. Seven and a half furlongs. These are Phillies allowance optional claimer. $75,000 claiming level. Scratch the uh, six magnificent Margo, the eight Yarmorka. And note the jockey on the two is Luca Panicha. I went with the number nine in here, Divine Ida, and you did too. I Ada. Yes. Like the opera, I guess. I Ada. 
Whichever. She ran very, very well last time out. What an impressive looking five length victory to break her maiden in her last start. This is going to be her first start on grass, but she is really bred for the turf. Unbridled Song, 13% with his first time turfers. Her damn passion was actually unbeaten on grass and earned more than $158,000 in just three starts on the turf. That includes a grade three stakes win. Now, Passion broke her maiden on dirt, just like Divine Ada, and then ran third in the grade two Adirondack. But she was even better on grass. So who's to say that off a five-length victory on the main track that Divine Ada can't take another step forward when she tries the turf? Yeah, and also been impressed with the trainer, Ramon Morales. Not a big uh, turf number, but his, all the horses he's run have looked good and run well. Uh, both ho a horse that we both used in second was the number four, Odichi. And this is a daughter of first samurai, debut on the turf for Ralph Nix. First start since winning uh, uh, its debut on the Gulfstream main track uh, back on September 20th. 27th and bred beautifully for the lawn Edgar Prado in the saddle. Yeah, you know, she actually beat Divine Ada in her first start, but I think Divine Ada had a bit of a rough trip that, trip that day. Um, but I don't know if I love the grass breeding because her dam was 0 for 2 on the grass, and neither of her two s siblings have been able to win on turf either. They're combined 0 for 4. So that was my question mark with Adachi. Oh, well, Adachi, and also the number three, how about Fearless Princess? This one proved the maiden score at Gulfstream wasn't a one-shot deal when she came back. She ran third. She was 51 to 1 in the R, dear Pe Peggy, and she was only beaten a half length in that race. Yeah, and she's already won at a mile and a 16th, so distance is no problem for this filly. Yeah, and she might turn out to be the right one in there. We've been talking about the other two, but, uh, you know, when you see a horse that uh, was 51-1 to one, it was in the stake, uh, look, people tend to back off, but this horse has run very well from that maiden win right into the stake. Uh, both of them are very nice performances in there. The ninth race today is uh, six furlongs. It's an allowance, optional claimer. $16,000 the claiming level. These are fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. Scratch the number two, Artsy. And we have a video we want to show you from October 23rd. And it's a number two horse that day, Little Tammy. Yeah, I really like this effort from Little Tammy. In the slop, she's going to close at the top of the stretch. Dual throughout and draw away to win. You're going to watch her here. I really like her way of going. She's got a very long, fluid stride. I thought this was a nice... Uh, she kind of made it look easy in the end. <laughs> you know, it looks like that she's going to battle with this other filly here, but then she kind of just goes right on by. Not a ton of urging, just a little bit of a reminder. She made two starts and did not show very much at two, but she's been given more time to mature and clearly is a different filly now as a sophomore. Her 73 buyer in that race there is also the highest last out buyer of this field. I went with the number five, one look who does the best running from a stalking position. I think she's going to sit a right, a nice trip behind the speed in the race. I should offer more on a fast track after the third behind a horse that's in this race. Good song uh, last time out. I think this horse is better on a, on a fast main track. Terry Pompey is the trainer. Abdiel High End will be in the saddle with the number five, one look. And we both have the number one on our ticket, and that's good song. Yeah, talk about a veteran. This one really has experience on her side, having made 46 starts, and she's posted 13 victories. You know, that's more wins than the rest of the field combined. Right. So that says something. She comes in off that one-length score and pretty much a race that's a carbon copy of this race. So... Uh, She's really the one to beat at 5-2. to two. I tried to beat her, but she looks very good in here. Well, here's an interesting horse in here, and that's the three white legend making its first start since going 5-7 for seven in the morning on this track, including its last race, which was back in May. It was a really good second. It was a seven furlong allowance, as I mentioned, back on May 9th. But Antonio Sano, the trainer here, he thought this horse was good enough. He entered her in the Call to Oaks back in April, you know, on this surface here. So this is a horse that they had to uh, think has some ability coming back for a really good barn. And I just think for a bit of a price there you know white legend you know 10 to 1 on the morning line uh horse for course type who's uh certainly has some ability to might be able to grab a share in here one of those you might want to put like on the bottom end of your exacta or trifecta ticket so uh we'll see how white legend runs uh, coming off the bench now don't forget that part so we'll have uh have an excuse if it doesn't run well the first time but we'll see what happens the 10th and final race what a Great way to end the day. Seven and a half furlongs on the firm turf. Of course, claim is three and up. Non-winners of two in life or three-year-olds. Jockey on the three is Jose Valdivia Jr. Also scratch number 10 in here, Solid Terry. I went with the number 11, Laura, Nora in the sky. And you went with the two horse in here. And this race I had trouble with. Wide open affair. Let's hear about the number two first. 
I'm going to envision a lot of very deep Rainbow Six tickets today <laughs> because you're going to want to close it out on a high note, and there are a lot of options in here. I went with the two La Chuchi. This one has a ton of success running at this level this summer up at Arlington. She was never off the board when running for a $16,000 tag in Chicago between May and August. That was on both turf and on synthetics. She hasn't won in a while, was very well beaten last time out, but that was against much tougher. The positive, I think, that's going to add to her price today so you can get a little bit more value. I think you'll see an immediate improvement from her in this spot. Well, I'll tell you why I like number 11, Nora in the Sky. It's one of the angles I always watch. This is a reclaim by Mike Maker. Returning to the turf after coming of MP. He has the four to five favorite. That was against 6,250 claimers. Going five and a half furlongs on the dirt. A maker 23% or whatever stat you want to give him, he's good. Going from the turf, uh, dirt to the turf, so he's very good. I just think Nora in the sky, a reclaim, that, that you know, piqued my interest. So I'm going to use this horse and certainly great connections with the trainer, Mike Maker. So we'll see number 11, Nora in the sky. Stepping up a little bit, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, we both, you, you know, I, we both used the number eight in the approval, but uh, you also used the number five in here, rein it in. Yeah, there's another one who's taking a steep class drop, and I think that's going to play a big factor in this race, all about class drops for me. This one's cutting her tag in half in this spot. She was third here at this race, mate. Beaten a length, two starts back at the $30,000 level. Missed the place by a head. I thought that was a very good effort, and if she can duplicate that, she can certainly get a piece of this, and she's worth a shot at 10 to 1 on the morning line. Well, I also use number one hot cotton here because uh, Pete, uh, Pete Aiello and I had a little problem with this horse. I ended up turning up being right about this horse hand in the turf last time out, and I'm just teasing Pete because he's off the, off the camera here. He proved he could turf when he shook off pressure in the stretch to win for the third time this year. He's seven for eight in the money. Uh, eight starts, three wins, four seconds, a proven commodity now on the turf. Stretching out today to seven and a half furlongs after that speed play, but I uh, thought the hot cotton should be somewhere on my uh, getaway ticket, and uh, it's not going to be an easy task hitting this uh, Rainbow Six today. Absolutely not. I love hot cotton. A little bit of a question mark stepping up in class today to this level, but she's certainly proven worthy of a chance. Well, that's how we see the card today, right? It should be a fun day of races. It's a beautiful day here in South Florida. And, Katie, I had to tie her to the seat because right next door is where the Hurricanes will be playing tonight. And if you're not aware of it right now, she's a big Hurricanes fan, and she uh, she can't stand, just she can't wait till that game starts. I'm a very proud <laughs> alumna. Go Canes today. Thankfully, the game starts after our card is over. So if you're <laughs> thinking about going to the game, gates do not open until 6.30 p.m. That is after our race card, so you better spend the day here with me we'll have game talk we'll have horse talk great betting also a carryover in the super high five in our That's last right. race that we did not mention hundred fifty thousand dollar jackpot up for grabs hey if you don't have a ticket to the canes game come win the rainbow six and go buy yourself a ticket so have a great day everyone and enjoy buy the yourself card. a team <laughs>